Hello and welcome to blog number 62, me learning to play in the Melodeon. It's been a couple of months since my last blog because I've been really busy uh, working out and practicing lots of tunes for the lessons for beginners that I do. Uh, but I wanted to show you a couple of things today. And so uh, here we are. This is my GC uh, Erica. This used to be my DG. Well, the case was my DG, but we swapped the reeds over. I say we, I mean Martin White, my fettler. Uh, because he fettled my DG, made it sound fantastic. He kind of dried it up a bit, made it fourth button start, uh, worked his magic on the, the bass side and the treble side in terms of limiting, and I wanted my GC to be the same, so he's done the same for that. Um, I'm going to play you a little bit of Vulse Triste, which I did uh, on this melodium before I had it fettled, so I'll play you a bit of the, the, the kind of before, when it was quite wet, and then... Uh, then I'll play you a bit of it the way it sounds now. <laughs> So I think it sounds a lot nicer now. It's been uh, dedic tuned, so that means to say that um, the two reeds for each uh, right hand note uh, kind of straddle a constant pitch. And um, I'll say, love the sound. The thirds in the major chords have been slightly flattened so that um, they just sound in tune. I don't profess to understand why that works, but it does. Um, and I love the sound of this box. I didn't tell you what happened to my Sauterel Pastorel 2 that I bought uh, back in October. I only had it for a few weeks. The truth was that I just wasn't using it. Um, it had the 12 bases and it had uh, the accidental row, the extra kind of 0.5 row. And it was a lovely box, sounded great. Uh, but I was so busy teaching and working out tunes for my students that I really wasn't getting anywhere near it. And to be honest, when I work out tunes, I tend to work them out for beginners who have probably only got like a standard two row. So I knew there was a guy that I'm friendly with on Melnet who uh, was after one, so I offered it to him and he snapped it up. So that's why that disappeared very, very quickly. Um, but it was a really nice box. I was watching one of my old uh, uh, blogs this morning and it certainly sounds nice. So you may remember from uh, a few blogs ago uh, that Jenny and I came up with this uh, contraption for uh, fixing the melodeon to myself uh, using this buckle arrangement and I've developed a much quicker way of getting into it and out of it. So basically I get the uh, shoulder straps ready, I tip the melodeon up that way, base in towards me and then it's simply a matter of plugging in uh, left bottom right bottom and tip it up and left top right top bit of uh, rearranging and uh, I'm in and as I said before it feels really comfortable and I'm really happy with this uh, since my last blog I've had some work done to this this was a third button start but I've had it converted to fourth button start that means to say that I've got a complete uh, G major scale uh, at this low end, and I'll play that for you now. <laughs> and this is what we call the Anahata layout, uh, where, as I say, you've got a complete G major scale at the low end. Obviously, this is the D row, and the only disadvantage with the Anahata layout is that as you get near the bottom here, <laughs> 
you play those three notes, it's not a D major chord because you've obviously got a G, it's kind of a D sus4. Whereas here, you have got uh, a continuation of the, the G major chord, but just that that's that one slight disadvantage of this layout. Obviously, if you've got low notes, uh, that means to say you don't have any accidentals, uh, then of course you've got the complete continuation of the major chord, but it's, you know, it's a small price to pay. And now, of course, with this fourth button start that I have, um, I've got less squeaky notes at this end and more useful low notes at this end. I've got my strap pretty tight. I spoke about this also in a previous blog, saying that I thought the strap was a bit, um, a bit loose. And to be honest, I've been getting quite a lot of pain in this part of my hand um, because, I don't know why, I think maybe because the strap was a bit loose and I was kind of sort of tensing my hand to stop it moving. Oh, well, it's not going to move now because I've um, taken the strap off, drilled two new holes. I only moved it about an eighth of an inch, but it's really made it quite tight now, and maybe possibly too tight. So I just get my hand through, and I can reach the buttons. And what I was finding with this air button was that with my thumb in the middle of it, I don't know, it didn't seem to be very responsive. So I find it to be more responsive at the very edge, the sort of the bottom edge of it. I must confess that I prefer the slot type Hona air buttons to these push-in ones. And I've had a few Melodians with a push-in um, air button and have been fine. But on this one, I find it's a bit sluggish unless I catch the bottom end of it. It might just be me. Now with the strap nice and tight, um, I can reach all the buttons fairly comfortably. What I was finding at Morris practice as I was pulling out, I couldn't seem to get a kind of immediate response. I was finding I was getting very worn out trying to get the melodian out quickly. And obviously when you've got a box like this where the bellows are small, you know, you need to watch your air button use very carefully because you can run out of air uh, very quickly. So I only did this yesterday. It possibly is a bit too tight, uh, but I'll know more after tonight's Morris practice. But basically the strap is tight. I've had a word with Charlie Marshall up in Scotland who um, supplies lots of parts and bits and pieces for boxes and he does do a Velcro strap for this uh, box so I will probably invest in that. The new Castanari Lilies come with a Velcro strap. One of my students has got one and it's got a lovely adjustable Velcro strap. Uh, this is the old style where you can only adjust it by unscrewing one end and drilling new holes which is what I've done. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. It certainly feels more immediate, you know, when I, when I move the, the left hand around, it seems to be moving um, as kind of part of me rather than uh, what was happening before was my, my left hand was slipping a lot and uh, it is a bit of a stretch to get to the buttons. Once I'm there, I'm there, uh, as I say, we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, I did a video uh, a few weeks back comparing the bases on this. Um, with the basses on the new Lily and the new Lily has some really lovely deep bass notes they're an octave mainly an octave below the basses not talking about the chords but the bass notes you've got a really deep bass obviously I guess over the 20 years 21 years since this was built people have complained about the lack of bass on it and as I say my students um, Lily is really lovely it's got some very very deep notes and I'm, I'm kind of envious of that although I really do like the sound of this as well. Uh, what else have I had done to this? Um, the B chord was actually a B major. Uh, this chord here on this uh, button number one inside row at the top there, um, that was a B chord. And initially I spoke in a previous blog about getting that converted to B minor, which I find more useful. But then I thought I can do a B minor seventh um, like this. So, do I want to change that? And I thought, well, if I have the third taken out of that chord, so it becomes a B5, it can be both. This chord now, that's what I had done, is a B5, so it's B minor and B major. Okay, I haven't got the nice rich three note minor or major chord, but this is particularly useful. And all the other uh, chords have got their full third, so if you listen to the other chords here, and the chord in the other direction of the E minor, all three notes. So what Martin uh, White, my fettler, did, he 
uh, just put a bit of tape over the reed, that D sharp reed, the third of B ma major. Uh, and so I've still got the full minor in the other direction. That B5 is pretty useful. Okay, in an ideal world you'd have both. Uh, I'd love um, a stop on this left hand side that I can uh, select B5, I can uh, remove the thirds. But of course that removes the thirds on all the chords. So that's one kind of advantage I've got. It's only this one that's got that B5. This Melodian had uh, a thumb strap. And just lately, I've just found it starting to get in the way a bit. I mean, if you don't use it, probably the best thing to do is to remove it, and that's what I've done. Unfortunately, it leaves a bit of a nasty hole, which for the moment I've just put a bit of tape over. There's probably some kind of grommet you can buy or something to put in there. But it um, leaves a bit of an unsightly hole. I didn't want to put the screw back in because that would probably be a bit sore on my thumb. So a few modifications on this anyway. Let's play you a tune that I've been uh, messing around with lately. Um, I found a, a really charming video the other day of a tune called Dashing Away With The Smoothing Iron, which is a, I guess it's a kind of an old nursery rhyme really. Um, but a really lovely video of some kids uh, all dressed up in kind of Edwardian clothes. So I figured it out. And um, I can't say I'm perfect on it yet, but I'll just give you a few bars of that so you can hear what this sounds like. Apart from having it turned into fourth button start, Martin's tweaked the tuning, um, and uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, in an ideal world, I'd probably go for an Oakwood um, box for Morris because this is great until our lead musician and her Oakwood uh, strikes up. And then I, I kind of get lost, even though the Lily is a pretty loud instrument. Um, I would really like an oak with a nice small size, nice and light, and they are phenomenally loud. But I guess there's good and bad ones, um, but uh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, if you don't know, most Melodian players are always looking for that next box. It's called MAD, uh, Melodian Acquisition Disease. Uh, and I'm always uh, uh, interested in any adverts crop up on Mailnet or on eBay. I'm always looking. And um, that's uh, my next goal to get, is to get an Oakwood. <laughs> One thing I've been doing that's been keeping me very busy over the last uh, six months or so uh, is that I've been providing lessons for beginners and maybe a little bit for improvers as well. So far I've come up with over 40 lessons and each lesson has a full length uh, video tutorial. Um, these range between 20 and 40 minutes long and a performance video and uh, uh, I give you sheet music and instructional notes. And at the time of doing this video, they cost just four ninety nine. So if you are interested at all in um, buying uh, one or more of these lessons, then please do go to my website. The address is on your screen now, and uh, you can access all this stuff immediately. It's all downloadable. Uh, the videos are YouTube videos, which are unlisted, so that only my customers can see them. And um, yes, it's really really picked up a lot in the last few months. I've had a lot of interest and uh, I'm really enjoying uh, working from home. Uh, my job used to be teaching music and singing and guitar and one thing or another in school. But now this has become my new kind of part-time job, rapidly becoming a full-time job. And I'm really enjoying it. So anyway, a pretty long blog that. I uh, hope you found it interesting uh, and I'll see you in the next one.